Well, hey, y'all. Happy Monday. Well, welcome back. So, things have been crazy, but no matter what, we can't forget that summer is coming. So today, while we take another look at my garden and the things that are growing and going on, I'm gonna chat with you of different little tips to be on top of as we come into summer. So let's go check it out. One really cool thing that I missed sharing with you guys last week, or when I shared the tour of this garden, is that I also looked into a mature grape. Now, this is an old grape, so I don't know anything about how it's been cared for, um, but I got some bags to bag some up and protect them from the grape, from the birds, and then I'll let the birds have some and we'll share and if they taste bad <laughs> then the birds can have them all so um but i forgot to share that with you um but we're really really excited about that and you guys have given me some really cool ideas um for using this fence as a trellis so i'm super stoked about that under this fig has kind of become my hangout spot in the late afternoon because it's cool it's shady and it also gives me a place to hide from everybody. So this is kind of from one end to the other. And last time I didn't get into this bed with you so much, but I picked, you know, a small little mess of green beans off of these. And I don't, I really don't know if they're gonna bloom one more time, but they look happy. So I'm certainly gonna give them a chance. Now this bed is a really great example of non-intentional and intentional intensive planting um, but i did all this with you know ideas in mind and that was that these beans are nitrogen fixing that means that they take nitrogen from the air they process it through their plant bodies and it fixes the soil they're a nice companion for the tomato, which I just wildly planted right in the middle of this bed, which is fine with also another bean plant. <laughs> this is an Anasazi. Um, but then we've also got a cucumber. That's what that little flower is. And then there's also, that right there is a spaghetti squash. And coming down here, there is a butternut and this spaghetti has got a really nice size fruit on it and then I've got my tomatillas over here and one of the tomatillas struggled a little bit I think I was missing getting it watered but now they're happy they've got a lot of new regrowth and then I'm gonna open them up a little bit keeping them close but then this will kind of be like a shade barrier um, on this side of the bed for so kind of got a little jalopy of shade going on right now because um, that's one thing I want to talk about in this video about summer's coming is summer's coming so we are gonna get like today Monday is gonna be nice I think this is a but yeah this is a butternut too because it there's a little female on that I don't know if you can see it so summer's coming you know today we're gonna just be in the 80s most of the day this weekend we're gonna be I think this is a cantaloupe I but I also sometimes think it's an Armenian so I'm not so sure um, so Thursday and Friday we're gonna have some days of 80s but as we round into and I think these are as big as they're gonna get so these are more like a pickling cucumber and I think there's another one like over there yep see it he's getting fat so I think this is as big as these are gonna get and I need to pick them so I got a, a couple different things to harvest out here but with those warmer temperatures coming in and as we get into uh, you know obviously the more we get into June we really get into those triple digit days and this is one of those things I don't know what it is it could be it's something that took a really really long time to germinate and now it kind of looks like 
a squash, but I wonder if it's, cross your fingers, maybe a loofah. I don't know. Um, so definitely want to start making sure that you've got your shade cloth up. Don't be deceived by these cooler days. I want to show you another thing real quick. This is, this is my fun solution for my unfun fence. So I look forward to showing you what this looks like. Now, you can't tell, but I'm really trying to be careful out here because the yard is still squishy because um, we did end up on a flood irrigated lot. So that's awesome. And we didn't do it back here last time because we just barely found the drain over there but we did it and it was pretty cool. So the peppers are all love and life and they are fronting up the head of the garden here, kind of getting most of the sun. Um, I don't know if I finished my note about sunshade. You gotta definitely get your sun cloth up. I noticed last week the intensity of the sun cha has changed. I am thinking that my potatoes either do not like me at all or they're ready to harvest so not today but i'm gonna harvest this and cross your fingers we'll see if we can see it together this one again i don't know if it just doesn't like me i haven't had a chance to add as much dirt this is a little patty pan and i've never grown them before so i really can't tell if they got germinated or pollinated like that one looks a little bit bigger um, I thought this was, again, I'm chasing Armenians, and I thought this was going to be an Armenian, but it's turning out to be, looks like a yellow straight neck. This is, I don't know what that is. This has got a big zucchini. I'm going to harvest that today for the girls to make zucchini bread, and then I'm going to harvest this mamma jamma. That's a yellow squash for squash bugs, a meal that we make with ground beef. You could use ground turkey. This is my huckleberries. Um, one of them, I think it was this one. One of them had a little bit of sugar. I think it was like the tomatilla. It wasn't getting enough water. So I've been letting them recover over here. But we're gonna make squash bugs. So it's basically some kind of meat, thinly squashed, sliced squash some onion, lots of salt and pepper. Real, real simple. The tomatoes are happy. I wish I could remember what this is. I think it, I think I got this from the swap and I just don't know what half of these are. Um, I know that this is an indigo apple. Let me come around the other way. Yeah, these are really tasty too. So they get these indigo kind of purple tops you can see down here and then as they finish they get little red bottoms like a like an apple you know so that one's got a little bit more red to go this is some kind of velarde i thought this was supposed to be some kind of orange jazz but it's got a really nice cool heirloom presentation this is some more of those wonderful bumblebees. I love these. Got that cool pattern. Such a wonderful taste. Don't know what this is. And down there is some zinnias. And then some of my basil's going to flower, which I do not mind. Some more zinnias. This is that berry's crazy cherry. And it's crazy love and life. <laughs> These are three seedlings <laughs> that I took really bad care of, but I decided to plant them all in this bag. And look, they're getting new growth. And I figured if they made it, I'd just split them up, <laughs> have more plants, who knows, you know. I did have my first hornworm sighting. So that's number two thing I want to talk about is be on the lookout for tomato hoeing rooms. So if you haven't been going by breaking off branches like this or nibbling on stuff like this, then this is a good chance that you've got a hornworm somewhere on your plant. And 
their poo kind of looks like little brown droppings sometimes that's an indicator you can look for them with a what's that called a black light um, now if you've just moved like me sometimes this can be challenging but I knew that this I've been watching this plant so I knew where it was at and what was going on with it so that's how I knew but again there's some that during the move got boinked around so hard that you might miss it but again if you saw this looking like this today and you came in and it looked like this um, this afternoon you've got a hornworm so you have to start hunting that little guy and getting rid of it so all the tomatoes are looking happy hoping that with these cooler days maybe we'll get some more flowers and anytime you can get out this is probably number three what was number two hornworms number three thing i wanted to talk about is pollination so because we're getting into higher temps most things are really only pollinating under about 90 degrees so in the morning if you can get out or in the late evening at night if you're like me then come out here and give these little flowers a jiggle because if we can get this pollen activated when it's under 90 then our friends will go ahead and still make tomatoes for us now over here I got that calendula from the yard and these are a couple of seedlings again that I let go too long and I've got a Malabar spinach here that I'm gonna plant in that bale and this is a moringa that I'm going to put out front. So, and that's the other thing I got to show you is out front. So, we'll wrap up out there. Okay, so now I'm going to share some of the front yard with you. But one of the final things I want to talk about um, as far as pollination goes is that doesn't just have to do with tomato plants. That's also your squashes and everything. So, if you see your squashes in the morning, now this is a rose and it's it had real pretty blooms when we first came um but it's kind of starting to die off so i'm excited because i do love roses and i've wanted to have roses for a long time so surely i can do something cool with this so no matter what it is even if you're having to hand pollinate your um squashes and stuff try to get out there and do that in the morning or at night again when we're below 90 degree temp is a look at the rest of the yard and it's still kind of damp and squishy um, from yesterday's irrigation which kind of brings us to um, tip number five and that is oop, see I just kind of sunk down a little bit that's to remember to stay really consistent with your watering and try not to show off the neighbors too much but this is the big front yard so try to stay real consistent with your watering and remember to get a deep soak in for your plants at least um, you know at least once or twice a week but making sure that you get that deep soak is gonna keep things from happening like blossom end rot um, this is a pomegranate now there were a lot more flowers on it so maybe the flowers maybe the fruit comes after the flowers cuz I think that's a pomegranate so that must be what happens so because again two weeks ago it was covered in flowers so these are all the buds so this is like one I mean they're huge bases so there's like at least three big mature pomegranates here and this is kind of standing at the corner of the yard and just like this yard got a deep deep soak um, this gets it twice a week or every two weeks the flood irrigation comes in but you just want to make sure and stay consistent with your watering so for me that means that I am making sure that every day all my containers and all my bags are getting a good drink now out front of the berm here kind of paying attention because um, I want to do some wild sunflowers here along the berm and when you know my husband has to come home 
I'd like to do some flowers up here, but I don't know how much of this I've got to kind of pay attention to how much of this is like what is just considered allowed to be walked on. Um, but somebody asked if they could get a view of the front yard and I did want to share the beautiful pomegranates and I think this is another ash. This tree's done some really unique things. Um, so I hope that those five tips um, really help you out. You know, um, remember to get some shade cloth going, pay attention for the tomato hornworms, uh, being on top of trying to get things pollinated when it's under 90 degrees. And it seems like there's something, I'm forgetting, deep consistent waters right now. And that's about it. So I think this is so interesting how, I think that was probably an ash in there and another ash is growing out and around it. So that's the front yard. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that little tour and I hope you found those little tips super helpful. Have the best day ever. Oh.